I'm breathing underwater, I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I gotta do is breathe underwater. This is the season finale, and if I may give a small spoiler, this is how a season should wrap up. We're seeing an attempted kidnapping. <laughs> Emphasis on attempted. He's going to feel that tomorrow. She should listen to the way he said that. Thank you. You've got a smudge on your face. Didn't it seem a little convenient that he came along just as this was happening? And if she can't see that he's a villain, she was more panicked than I thought. George Sanders had that look that fairly screamed sophisticated bad guy, and he ran with it all through his film career. He was born in Russia, but his family moved to Great Britain when the Russian Revolution broke out in 1917. This guy did it all. He won an Academy Award for his role in All About Eve. He released a singing album in 1958. He married not one, but two of the Gabor sisters, although his marriage to Magda in 1970 lasted just over a month. It still counts. Unfortunately, even though this was his fourth divorce, that one seems to have hit him pretty hard. He turned to alcohol, and by 1972, things had fallen apart for him. His health was declining, dementia was starting to set in, several people close to him died in rapid succession, and he suffered some financial reversals that left him almost broke. Way back in 1937, he told David Niven that he intended to leave this world by suicide when it was time, and he was as good as his word. In April 1972, he checked into a hotel in Spain and swallowed five bottles of Nembutal, the same barbiturate drug I was addicted to in my teens. It was enough to do the job. He was 65. And if you've watched my Adamania series about the 60s Batman, you know that to us he'll always be the first and possibly best Mr. Freeze. Right now, he's a kidnapper. Who is this lady and why are these guys so eager to grab her? Identification confirmed. We have Admiral Nelson's sister. Oh, that's who she is. Suddenly it all makes sense. They've sent that passport to her brother with a note. docking in 15 minutes. Any instructions for the crew while you're ashore? Of course he hasn't told Crane. What do you think they are, friends? No, no, nothing. Oh, yes, there, there is one thing. Um, the Western Alliance inspection team will be bringing the detection navigator aboard at 0700 tomorrow. Now, if I'm not back, then post an armed guard on the device and... Uh, and keep the two gentlemen entertained until I get back. Very well. He's not too concerned about whatever he said right now. He's following instructions. Very well. Give me that. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. The, uh... Okay, that put it over the top for him. He says you're entitled to an explanation after that. When the harbor pilot came aboard, he brought me a confidential letter. Here it is. It concerns my sister. Edith, is she all right? 
Uh, she was, um, she was driving from Cannes. There was uh, some kind of a road accident at the moment. I, uh, I don't even know how badly she's hurt. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I know how much she means to you. Well, she's all the family I have. I, I don't know what it... Here's a little weirdness for you. Captain Crane called her Edith, and Admiral Nelson confirmed it. But in the credits, she's listed as the sister. This is because the guy who made the titles didn't know how to spell Edith. And rather than help him out, his colleagues stood around and laughed at him. This was his revenge. It's a really small part this time, but we know Susan Flannery from the Time Tunnel, the Green Hornet, and this is her second appearance here. She spent most of her career doing soap operas. She was on Days of Our Lives for nine years and was on The Bold and the Beautiful from 1987 to 2018. Longevity like that boggles my mind. As some of you know, I watched General Hospital for a while. Anthony Geary played Luke Spencer on that show for over 50 years. I can't wrap my head around that. The nice thing about being a soap opera actor is characters on those shows tend to come and go, often with a long hiatus between appearances. That gives people time to do other projects, and most of the people who act in that industry take advantage of it. Today, we'll see more of that passport photo than we will of the actual person. The letter has told Nelson where to go and when, so he takes a seat at the Café Le Fleur, orders an Alsatian beer, and waits. Mind if I sit down? Suit yourself. I heard you speak English to the waiter. Uh, are you by any chance an American? That's right. Splendid. I enjoy speaking to Americans. Uh, have a smoke. Thanks. Oh, nice. oh, but I must insist you like these. They're Alsatians. Since you put it that way, how can he refuse? This has been a most intriguing case for us. Uh, there was one school which maintained that you were an individual of such great integrity that nothing in the world would induce you to betray your country's secrets. I'm flattered. Others of us maintained that you, like everyone else in the world, had a vulnerable spot. Now, the question is, have we found that spot? That's for him to know and you not to, dude. Keep guessing while you tell him what you want. That requires a change of location. Somewhere along each of these lines of longitude, there is a missile silo buried deep beneath the sea. Your agents have been busy, haven't they? And why not? This is the most valuable secret in the world today. Now, give us these lines, and each X formed on the map will pinpoint an underwater missile site. Keep in mind that although this was made and aired in the 60s, the events are supposed to be taking place a good 10 years in the future, the mid-70s. We're assuming that by that time, the United States will have the technological capability to do what he said. Unless the silos are in really shallow water, I don't see this being physically possible. When a submarine launches a missile, a big charge of compressed air forces it out of the tube and up far enough to break the surface where its engines can ignite and do the missile thing. For that to happen, the sub can't be more than about 150 feet deep. That really narrows the list of places a country could put such silos because they would operate the same way. And if the silos are that shallow, they're vulnerable. I don't see a setup like this happening in any future. But it happened in this future, and he wants that map with the other lines filled in. Nelson was supposed to bring it. A search suggests that he didn't. I carried out instructions exactly. I have the map. And hand it over. Now, you've been making a lot of conditions. I have a condition of my own. All right, what is it? Name it. You'll get the map. The moment I know my sister is safe inside the American consulate. Is that all? That's all. After some wrangling and threats, she's safe inside the consulate. Is this what you were looking for? It sure looks like the real thing, but he has to verify it. He says, your sub is going to be checking these sites over the next few days. We'll check them with you. And how does he propose to do that? Detection navigator. Hmm? That's a new one on me. Oh, the principle's simple enough, Chip. You see, once we're within a 10-mile radius of a missile silo, 
our regular navigation instruments cut out, and this gadget automatically takes over. Well, we might as well blindfold us. Here we are going to check missile sites. We don't even know where they are. Well, that's the general idea, Chip. Our man says that's all his government wants. They want to know where these things are. They don't have any plans to do anything unless there's a war. If that happens, they have a distinct advantage and can take the silos out before they're able to launch. That machine is supposed to let them find the silos to inspect them without knowing their precise position. Let's meet the inspectors. Admiral, here's one of your guests, Major General Fenton. A pleasure to meet you at last, Admiral Nelson. How far have they penetrated the United States security? Their agent is a two-star general. Admiral, this is Colonel Hamid. Admiral Nelson. Glad to have you aboard, Colonel. Thank you. Uh, may I inquire after your sister, sir? Is she safe? According to our spy, they can kill her even inside the consulate. If they've compromised security to the point where he's a general, anything is possible. So, no, she isn't safe. How kind of you to ask. Yes, how is she? Is she safe? Oh, excuse me. Uh, perhaps I phrased my question badly. Um, is she well? I told the colonel you'd been to see her sister and that she'd been in an accident. Thanks, Lee. It almost feels like they're taunting him, doesn't it? There was a serious accident on the road from Cannes. Uh, uh, fortunately, she wasn't seriously injured. She's in the small sanitarium outside of Marseille. Oh, I am relieved to hear that it was not serious. At least not so far. Yes, Colonel. Uh, we are all quite relieved. Aren't we, Admiral? Okay, that tells us something about this guy. He's very good at his job, clearly, but he has a serious ego problem. He can't resist rubbing the Admiral's nose in it. That tells me he's insecure about himself, his manhood, and his relative place in the universe. He has to prove he's a big man by pushing someone else around and gloating about it. That's a puny, fragile ego that will fray at the edges the first sign that someone or something is messing up his plans. That's something the Admiral can use. Uh, this is our present course. We approach the first missile site, the sealed automatic navigator takes over. It's preset with the correct course, so that no one aboard can calculate our true position. Yes, I know all about that device. Colonel Hamid and I, as trusted security officers, brought it on board. How about you shut up and let him finish? But as I said, his puny self-image forces him to prove that he's the superior one here because he knows all about stuff. Well, let's tell him the part he doesn't know. I alone have the data to decode the instruments on the device each time we make a contact. I can give you this data so that you can calculate the exact position for yourself. And that way you'll know that the map I gave you was legitimate. I counted 30 lines on that map covering the entire planet. Does he intend to stay on board to check all of them? I'm told there's a confidential radio message for me. Oh, yes, Colonel Hammond. Right here, sir. Thank you. Whatever is in it, it's prompting him to search Nelson's quarters while he's not there. Whatever he found there has him asking for a private meeting with Captain Crane. So there is no record of an auto accident on the road from Cannes. What's the point, Colonel? And no record of an American woman in any sanitarium on the outskirts of Marseille. That means nothing to you? It means the French authorities made a mistake. That's all. Did all the sanitariums make a mistake, too? That's a pretty long string of coincidental mistakes. There's another security officer aboard. Talk it over with him. It is our policy to work independently of one another, a double precaution. Yes, the colonel is legitimate. He doesn't know his counterpart is a foreign spy, but he has a fair idea that someone is pulling Nelson's strings. You seem to thrive on suspicion, colonel. I am paid to be suspicious. And I'm beginning to suspect Admiral Nelson went ashore yesterday. For a reason very different from the one that he gave. Well, if he did, it was his own business. With a vital secret at stake, Captain. He has one more card he can play. I mean that literally. It's a postcard. Do you recognize that handwriting? This is from the Admiral's sister. Where did you get this? I took the liberty of going through some of Nelson's papers. You had no right to do that. It is my job, Captain. Now, I suggest that you study that card most carefully. 
I find it very curious. He'll protest, but he'll read it. Admiral Nelson is checking that guidance thing. They're on its automatic pilot, approaching the first sidle. Admiral, I just had a strange conversation with Colonel Hammond. And? It had to do with your sister's accident. What about it? The fact is, there was no record of it at all. Well, I'm not surprised. The provincial police are often very careless about things like that. Funny how that's everybody's first answer. I wonder what the French authorities thought about being written off as redneck bunglers. Mm, that's what I told him. But there's also the matter of the sanitarium your sister was staying. I will not be cross-examined about my private affairs by Colonel Hammond or... Or by anyone else. Once more with feeling, Admiral, he really thinks Crane is going to let that go by. No, he's filing it away for later. Right now, Nelson needs to go get General Fenton. Crane wants to talk it over with Chip. Something just doesn't add up. What's your sister doing in Europe in the first place? Touring. It's a popular pastime. Look, let me show you something. New York skyline. No, no, read the other side here. Harry, dear, Europe was a ball, but it's good to be home again. Tell you all the news next time you're in port. Look, it was postmarked three weeks ago. Why would she turn around and go right back to Europe? According to that, she's in New York and has been since before all this started. Marked. First missile site is checked, the missile found operational. Note that not all Next, the Admiral and the General will go to Nelson's cabin and verify what they just did, specifically the location. What's the problem, Spice? Somebody's using an electronic device. Shall I alert a detail to run a trace on it? Yes, go ahead. No, wait a minute. Give me the portable detector. Yes, sir. I want to track this one down myself. No, it's not who you think. It's Colonel Hamid. He's using a crude listening device to try and overhear the conversation in the next cabin. If I have to specify whose cabin it is, we may have a problem here. How's the eavesdropping, Colonel? Uh, it's not good at all. Hey, would you like to try? I don't spy on friends. And the Admiral's my friend. All the same. Come and listen, eh? This is uh, hardly eavesdropping, is it? My family used to have one of those huge console radios with a dozen knobs on it and more bands than your eyes could follow. I used to mess with the shortwave bands every so often, especially late at night. I think I heard that same station. I've had another report, a more significant one. I'm not interested. Yes, but you will be. You see, because I have received a radio message from an agent in Marseille reporting that he has seen a woman answering the description of Nelson's sister. When? Yesterday. She was seen entering the American consulate at exactly the same time that Nelson claims that he was visiting her in a sanitarium. Captain Crane wants to believe the best of his closest friend, but he's starting to waver. You know, that's easily checked. I can radio a query to the American consulate. I suggest you do, and uh, please request an answer in your personal court. Eh? If he wasn't wavering, he wouldn't bother. But he should have given Sparks more specific instructions about it. Captain Crane, this is Sparks. Yes, Sparks. That reply came. It's in your personal code. Very well. I'll pick it up. Putting that over the general PA was a mistake because we know there's at least one person on board who doesn't want him asking too many questions. Or maybe more specifically, doesn't want him getting too many answers. When he wakes up, the message is gone. He didn't get a chance to read it. Well... The message is gone. And you have no idea what it said about his sister? None. I was on my way to my cabin to decode it when I was hit. Then you must send a new query at once. Now he's sure there's something going on, so this time he won't argue. A security report. Have it coded and sent as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Yes, that's all.
or not. Crane orders an immediate surface while crews fight the fire. They open the hatches and turn on their internal blowers to get the smoke out. Not to mention let breathable air in. Where's General Fenton? I don't know. We'll find him. Tell him I want to see him in my cabin, alone. Yes, sir. He has a fair idea that Fenton did this and why, but he has just about had it with this smug creep. Captain Crane has his own stuff to deal with. If I stop all work on the ship, cut off all electronic gear, will that listening device of yours work? It will. Mr. Morton, how's the air? Reaching normal on the ship, sir. Very well. Secure all work details and rig for silent running. Silent running? Until further orders. He's still not sure about the Admiral, but I have a feeling nobody trusts Fenton at this point. You're worse than a fool. You're a dangerous maniac. I only did what had to be done. Do you realize that that message from the American consul could have exposed us both? Yes, but a plastic bomb on the radio shot. You could have killed one of my men. I know, it's regrettable, but I had to act fast. As the expression goes, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. All he knows is destroy, tear down, ruin. The idea of creating some kind of interference wouldn't occur to him. No, if it's in his way, blow it up. It's another aspect of that smugness that he covers up his fragile ego with. I'm better than you because I can make your stuff go kaboom. See me, I am a big man. General Fenton. You are shocked about the Admiral, but I am even more shocked about Fenton. He is one of our top-ranking security officers, a man that we all completely trusted. That's how sleeper agents work. He's been biding his time, doing his job well in advancing until the day he's called on to do something like this. But he's sure he's going to get away with it. He's left nothing to chance. Hamid says these two have to be arrested and brought back to Marseille. Do I have your permission to act? Crane says, you do. I'll get us underway to Marseille. Needless to say, the mission is aborted. He's not about to show this guy any more silos. It is my duty to place you under arrest. If it matters, I have observed protocol. I have the permission and the cooperation of your captain. I see. And um, what do you propose to do now? Return you to Marseille, of course. He's remarkably okay with that. Eh? Very well, Colonel. This wasn't entirely unexpected. But there's one thing I must ask of you. Yes? This must be conducted with the utmost secrecy. I give you my word. I won't try to escape. In return... I expect you to tell no one, especially General Fenton. Tell him why, Admiral. That would be most convenient, wouldn't it? You're asking me to arrange his escape. Tell him why, Admiral. I am going to arrest the General, too. You, you can't do that. I have no choice. You will be locked in here until I can make more suitable arrangements. Instead of that, tell him why, Admiral. The Colonel is a much better fighter than Admiral Nelson is. As I said, he's a much better fighter, but in the end he just falls down because the script says so. Nelson staggers out to a microphone in the hall and calls for security. He says, the colonel flipped out and attacked me. Here I am. Put the colonel under guard. He's gone for sick. Get two corpsmen in here. Come in, Admiral. Well, he won't give them much resistance. Figuring out who did that is a no-brainer, but of course they'll suspect Admiral Nelson. 
even though I want to hear someone explain where he got a knife like that. He and Crane are chatting, and the captain is inclined to believe him when he says he didn't kill the colonel. But the colonel's murder isn't the half of it. Oh, I know, and all the other things. Uh, but, for example, the fact that uh, I hit you over the head. Got that message from the council. Go on. Well, the message would have told you that my, my sister had not been of an accident. As a matter of fact, she had just been released by a foreign agent. Then she was released in exchange for your cooperation. Yeah. That's the story. Thing is, remember when he dropped the passport? There's a reason why he didn't want Crane to get too good a look at it. Is that my sister? It's her passport, but not a picture. She's an American agent posing as his sister. Edith is in the States in a safe house until this whole thing is finished. And now we know why she's listed as the sister. Because her name's not Edith, and we wouldn't lie to the viewers. Except she's not his sister either, but it doesn't say his sister. It just says the sister. So I guess she's somebody's sister, just not Harriman Nelson's. You don't know how much I, I wanted to let you know about this, but nobody could be told. What about Fenton? Uh, he's the key to the whole plan. You know already that he's an enemy agent. But he doesn't know that the map I gave him is false. Remember what I said about checking all 30 sites? The goal is to convince Fenton that checking the one site verifies that the map is accurate. He toddles off to his handlers and tells them he's confirmed that it's real. They congratulate each other on this stroke of espionage, and General Fenton is under surveillance from then on. He won't be seeing too many more secrets from the U.S., NATO, or anybody else. And that's the thing about his line of work. Rendering him useless is worse than deporting him or killing him, because the outfit he works for likes results, and they get a little huffy when they don't get them. False. I heard him check the first missile site. That was the bait. The rest of the map is untrue. But we've got to see to it that he reports to his side that it's accurate. But why? Well, think of Fenton as the manager of a big league ball club. If he thinks that he's stolen our signals, his scouts will stop trying to get them, but only if he believes that our team doesn't know about it. Yeah, that's the same thing I said, except more interesting. <sighs> well, that's quite a game you've been playing. Well, it's only got to win. Now play along with me on this, Lee. But how? There's been a murder. I've got to abort this mission. It's by all means. But make Fenton believe you buy my story. Hammond went berserk and attacked me. I killed him in self-defense. That way he keeps believing that Nelson is legitimate in his little act of treason. And Fenton really is a bit of a dimwit. He's the reason they have to abort the mission. Killing Hamid pretty well guaranteed it, but I'm not sure he realized that when he did it. Nelson is explaining that he kept his end of the bargain even though Fenton only got to check one site. Fenton says that's not good enough. Why not? Spot checking is a widely accepted scientific technique. If one site is legitimate, there's no reason to doubt the others. Besides, uh, oh, sure. Nothing. And believe me, it's much better to be able to report a success. I hardly need convincing on that score. And now he's going to do what all bad guys do. He's going to change the rules. Hamid's death makes it possible for me to get the detection navigator long enough to have it copied. And with that little device on my country's submarine fleet, we can detect all of the missile sites, present and future. The security regulations plainly state that the detection navigator must be in the custody of two security officers at, at all times. Precisely. And it will be. In my custody and in yours. Now they need a plan to keep him from copying the machine. He's one of the assigned security officers and nobody else knows his real job, so he's expected to remove it from the sub. But after that is when the rest of them go to work. Crane will have a shore party ready, but we're dealing with professional spies here. This will require a lot more gadgetry than they're used to. Nelson says, go to the Café Le Fleur after I leave there. Hear anything? No sound at all. I'll do something. Now watch that down.
He'll blow that after Fenton has radioed his report to his handlers. That's how they'll know when to strike. Here's how they'll know where to strike. Invisible tracer. Now put on the glasses and tell me what you see. Even though he was blindfolded at the time, he knows the place they took him last time is within walking distance, so if he uses a lot of that, they shouldn't have any trouble tracking his movements. The best part? This is France, so nobody will question some random guy wearing sunglasses in the middle of the night. He'd attract even less attention if he was naked. Come here. Right here. All right, you know what to do. Okay, move out. Two of them will go to the other entrances to the building, while Crane and Morton put a bunch of thermite on the door and wait for the watch to light up. Splendid. My superiors acknowledge the receipt of my confirming information. My country now has the location of all of your missile sites. They compliment you on your work. This is one of the very few times I was ever glad Admiral Nelson smokes. Okay, let's take this guy down. Aw oh, man, we were this close to finding out his name, too. What a tragedy. Fenton doesn't care about anything but catching up with Nelson and getting the machine back. They're playing cat and mouse in a warehouse. Now listen. This building has a destruct mechanism. When that fire reaches a certain temperature, the whole place goes up. Let it blow. You're not getting your hands on this again. Here's a goofy idea. Forget Nelson, forget the detection navigator, go deal with the fire. I repeat, give this up and go deal with the fire before the place explodes. You want to live to enjoy the results of your success with the map, don't you? I guess I'll take that as a no. In the previous episode, they kept Admiral Falk's secret because there was no harm in it. But you can bet they'll expose this guy. We'll hear the usual stuff. We have no idea how much information he might have passed to the enemy. But we know exactly what he passed to them and we know how useful it is. So, if nuclear war ever did happen, the East would blow big holes in the empty ocean. This could turn out to be a little one-sided. Good thing it's fiction. That concludes Season 1. We had a few clinkers, but in the main, the show was wildly popular. I was 12 when it premiered, and my friends and I talked about it for days after every episode. We weren't alone. The whole country was talking about this amazing show, and we couldn't wait for the next season. After a little break, I'll be back to look at that, but I can give a couple of previews of coming attractions. First, we'll finally be in color. And second, we'll be introduced to one of the great enduring contradictions of the 20th century, the flying sub. I'm breathing underwater, I'm weightless through space. 
I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I got to do is breathe underwater. Several people, 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 for nine years, don't bite yourself. Of cons, go, go, yeah, yeah. Get the word right, okay. Say his sister, it's just, boy, I am making a mess of this. Good sing, good, good singer, say, yeah, yeah.